take a quick check of the president race here in Minnesota. 40% of the precincts reporting Joe Biden with a lead of 16%, 57 to 41% over President Trump. Political reporter John Croman joins us now to talk about some state races we're watching closely and how they could affect the balance of power in the Minnesota legislature, John. That's right, you know, Randy, senators were not on the ballot back in the 2018 midterm. So this is the first time since President Trump took office that state senators have been on the ballot and had to face voters. Now, Democrats are hoping to recapture control of the state Senate and have single party control at the state Capitol. Uh, here's how that's going so far tonight. Here's one district to look at, District 44. Uh, that one is an open seat. Uh, the Senator Paul Anderson retired. Um, and so so it's a pickup for Dems tonight. DFL, uh, DFLer Ann Johnson Stewart defeated Republican Greg Poles in that race. Now, though, down in Lakeville, District 58, incumbent Democrat Matt Little is trailing Republican challenger Zach Duckworth. And that's about half the votes were in there, but Little is not doing as well there as the Democrats would hope. Now, currently, Republicans have a 35 to 32 seat majority in the state Senate, so the Dems would have to flip two seats to get to a 34, 33 majority. And right now, again, it's too early to tell. There are about 16 seats that were considered in play going into tonight by one party or the other, so we'll see how that works out. In the meantime, uh, two of the state senators, two Republicans that have been targeted by Democrats, look like they've survived. That's Senator Warren Lemmer in Maple Grove and Senator Dave Osmick in mound. They both appear to have survived and won re-election, so those seats will remain in uh, control of uh, the Republicans. Of course, the whole issue with single-party control of the Capitol is that's when you get some of these big things done, as in, we you know, the last time we had that in Minnesota, uh, they passed the minimum wage, they passed gay marriage, they passed a, a tax on higher-income people, things that have been, been on the DFL wish list. So if they got control, they'd have that. Plus, as Brian McClung pointed out earlier tonight, they would also be in control of drawing the legislature legislative lines, the legislative districts after the census for redistricting. Back to you. A very big deal. Thank mm -hmm. you, John.